Okay, so the objective, yeah, this session is uh, primarily uh, aimed for teachers uh, to help teachers to be effective in using edit maths in your classes, uh, yeah, in your maths classes, uh, obviously. Uh, so uh, this is this is what I'll be covering. Okay, so start with uh, uh, what Singapore maths is, yeah. Now Singapore maths, yeah, is not. Um, I mean. Uh, especially in this region, yeah, a lot of people say uh, they want to use Singapore maths to teach their children and so on. But uh, Singapore maths is not about the textbooks. Yeah? Because when, when parents say that, then they go and get Singapore maths textbooks and they think that is uh, Singapore maths. Yeah? But uh, it's more about how teachers actually teach maths in Singapore. Okay, so how maths is uh is uh, being taught uh, yeah. how the way that is uh is taught yeah in Singapore, and also how the students learn maths in Singapore. Okay, so of course the Singapore maths textbooks is part of it, but uh there's only a small part uh, yeah. Um. So the Singapore maths approach is uh, adopted in edisys maths curriculum so that's why uh, we want to talk about uh, simple maths and, and how um, teachers can be uh, more effective uh, in, in teaching this <clears throat> okay so singapore maths uh, is built around a framework which uh, the center of which is uh, mathematical problem solving yeah so when they talk about mathematical problem solving, uh, there are many different uh, domains, five different domains actually, yeah? uh, in terms of uh, the students need to understand the concepts. Okay? Uh, these are the concepts of numbers, algebra, geometry, and so on. Uh, yeah? And then uh, the domain of skills, yeah? so that the students need to, need to have the skills to perform numerical calculations, uh, how to manipulate algebra and so on. Okay. Uh, and also be equipped with the processes. Yeah? That means the students need to be able to think in uh, mathematical terms. Yeah? Think, of course, uh, at the primary level in number terms first. Uh, yeah? And then uh, to build upon that to, to think mathematically. And uh, also students need to be aware of how they are learning, their, their own process of learning, uh, so that they can improve themselves. Uh, and the attitudes towards maths. Uh, I'm sure as teachers, you find a lot of students say they don't like maths, uh, or, or even stronger, they hate maths. Uh, 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 so that is not the sort of attitude that would be helpful for them lah, nah, to, yeah. to learn the subject. Nah. So, uh, so met learning mathematics also uh, helps to build this uh, level of uh, appreciation and confidence uh, in, in maths. Okay, so but I won't go too much into this framework. This is just um, the way that the Singapore Maths curriculum uh, frames it. Yeah? So uh, the main point that we focus on is the problem solving. Okay. So the focus is the thinking skills and problem solving strategies. Yeah? Um, <clears throat> now, it focus also on both instrumental and relational understanding. I shall talk uh, more in detail about this uh, in a while. Okay? Uh, that means uh, we are not just looking at one level of uh, understanding, uh, which typically in many, many school curriculum is just how to do, yeah? how to do uh, maths problems, how to do addition, how to do subtraction, and so on. Okay? So in Singapore maths, we go beyond that. Yeah, I'll, I'll touch more on that uh, shortly. 
and uh, it looks at the competency that the the students will acquire a competency in terms of the different skills uh, and the, the level that they can reach. Lah, yeah. Okay, other, uh, just to give some historical perspective. Uh, so Singapore met uh, this, this uh, approach actually began in 1980. Uh, before that, Singapore in their schools, they were using imported uh, textbooks. But in 1980, they began to develop their own uh, approach to mathematics instruction uh, using the latest in, in educational uh, uh, pedagogies. Uh, yeah. um, so initially, it was covering the primary grades, primary one to primary six in Singapore. Yeah, but of course, the same concepts um, is, has been extended to the secondary as well. Yeah. Uh, but today we are focusing on primary. <clears throat> okay, so it focuses on conceptual understanding and problem solving, as uh, we touched on a bit earlier. And uh, one of the big feature is that there is a lot of uh, what we call visualization. Okay, uh, because uh, uh, many students learn through, uh, uh, or many students are what we call visual learners. Yeah. Uh, so that helps the students to uh, to visualize the problems, visualize the concepts, and uh, apply it to problem solving. Okay, <clears throat> um, it doesn't mean that it only address for the visual learners, yeah, uh, because this visualization actually do help uh, students even if they are not necessarily visual learners. Okay, um, as you will see uh, later. Okay, so earlier I talked about um, instrumental and uh, 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 relational understanding. Okay, so at the basic level, instrumental understanding is just know how to do, how to do the addition, how to do subtraction, and so on. Okay, <clears throat> but uh, in Singapore maths, we try to go beyond. We try to go into what we call relational understanding. Yeah, these concepts were put forward by this uh, uh, Richard Stem. Uh, uh, so that's why his name is there. Huh? He's, he's, the, he's the one who first proposed uh, these concepts that there are different levels of understanding. Okay? So for relational understanding, we want the student to be able to explain what goes on. Yeah? Uh, it's not just to not just uh, that one student is able to help another because you find that when one student helps another, uh, again they are just explaining at the level of instrumental understanding. They can explain to their peers how to do it, okay, and maybe their peers can learn well lah. Huh? That's that's okay, but uh, relational understanding is is the reason, is the why. Uh, uh, that, that goes on in the process. Okay, an example would be let's say like long division. Yeah. <clears throat> so instrumental understanding, we can say, okay, we take this number, we we start from uh from left to right. Yeah. So in 2000, 2048, we look at the two first and then consider whether it can divide by six. It cannot, then we take the 20 and look at how it can divide by six. Uh, so so uh, there's three three of uh, six inside. Yeah. So three times six is 18. So that means we can take 18 away from the 20 uh, and so on. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that's instrumental understanding, yeah, which uh, when you ask uh, a good student to help a a uh, poor uh, student who is weaker, uh, that's what they would do. Lah. They can explain how it's done. Okay? But relational understanding uh, would then explain what is going on, why it's done this way. Okay? Because especially when you do uh, the other arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, uh, which way you do it? You do from right to left, right? 
that means you add the 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 ones digit first and then you add the tens digit yeah um uh, but why in division we do it the other way around uh, so relational understanding uh, uh can explain that yeah of course there are different ways you can you can uh, explain that you can explain that by looking at how we group how we group these numbers and now uh, that's why we need to divide um the, the in this case the thousands place first and then hundreds place and so on okay so so that's the difference between instrumental understanding and relational understanding uh why do the students need to know that because then um uh, they will have better confidence about about this this process uh they will also be able to apply this to to um, less familiar situations yeah uh, so that's where we talk about problem solving yeah so if they just stay it uh, if they just stay at instrumental understanding um, they will not easily apply this concept across to to similar situations okay so um, that's that's one of the features in the Singapore maps that we try to to aim for yeah <clears throat> okay another feature that is uh, used especially in the primary maps is it uses this three step process of uh, learning okay uh, okay for a for a young child uh, their method of learning is what we call concrete again uh, yeah you see this name jeremy Jerome Brunner, yeah, he's the he's the educational psychologist that came up with this theory, yeah. But it's not just a theory because it has been uh proven in, in practice for many years already, yeah. Okay, so the the idea is that young children learn things in a concrete manner, yeah. So, um, they need to see and touch and taste and play with the things. Yeah, so that's why in in uh, for example like kindergarten, uh, you don't uh, give a bag of uh, apples to you don't hold up a bag of apples in front of the class and ask the class how many apples are in the bag. Okay, uh, they need to actually feel it and and uh, move the apples from one side to another to be counting them. Yeah, because they learn things in a concrete manner. Yeah, so if if you want them to count uh the number of uh, uh cookies yeah so that's what they will handle they will they will be handling the cookies uh and, and counting them maybe move from one plate to another and so on okay <clears throat> now uh as they grow a bit older then they are able to deal with what is known as pictoria that means we don't have to actually give them the the objects uh, to uh, to manipulate but we can represent them in picture form okay so instead of actual cookies uh, uh, of course at first it's just pictures of cookies huh? um, uh, then you can progress to just maybe just round circles uh, each round circle representing one cookie okay so that's the idea of Victoria okay and then at a later stage only they are able to to handle what we call abstract, yeah, which is like symbols. I mean, you see the number three there. Of course, you and I we understand what the number three means, <clears throat> yeah. But it is, uh, it is an abstract concept. It is just a symbol. Yeah, that means if you throw this at a young child who has not learned it before, they won't know what it is. They won't know which way is is the correct way for the number three to to uh, be written or so yeah so uh, uh, that's that's the at the abstract level okay so so children learn uh, through this process uh, concrete Victoria abstract CPA uh, in short and uh, uh, so in the in our primary maths uh, we design very much uh, with this uh, in mind especially when we move from from grade to grade, yeah, so that the uh, is suitable to the to the way that the children learn. Okay, so um, 
<coughs> Another example of, of this uh, concrete uh, pictorial and abstract approach, um, we may use, uh, you, you'll be familiar with this uh, uh, unifix cubes, yeah, which is a, a common manipulatives that the uh, young children use yeah, in kindergarten or in grade one. So there are five pieces that are joined together, yeah, which will of course represent five. Um, so if you ask a child to put it into two groups, yeah, then of course uh, they may break it up into uh, two and three. Yeah? Uh, yeah, of course it can be one and four and so on as well. Yeah? <clears throat> but it's this is the concrete. Yeah, that means they actually take the, the unifix cube and then they manipulate it. Yeah? They, they break that up into two. And Victoria, Victoria, uh, we can then just use picture of the of the uh, cube. Yeah, to say you know, how we can break up uh, five into two parts, into two groups, one having three and one having uh, two. Yeah. And then we can move towards, yeah, if they have learned the numbers, we can move towards uh, uh, representing this in a pictorial form, uh, where five is made up of three and two. Okay. <clears throat> so we have the concept of the, the whole part, the uh, sorry, not part, but the, the whole. Yeah, that means what is what we started out with and uh, how it can be uh, broken up into three and two. Okay. Uh, so of course this here, as I said earlier, the, the numbers themselves are abstract, yeah? but assuming if they have learned uh, the, the symbols for the different numbers, yeah? uh, we can, so Victoria itself, we can progress, yeah? uh, uh, where, where there are diagrams of the, of the object to uh, actually using symbols. Okay? Now this, uh, if you have uh, worked with our material, you recognize that this is what we call a number bond. Yeah. So, uh, this this could be a way that we use also to introduce to the student the, the number bonds. Yeah. How they how they can represent number bonds, <coughs> and abstract. They will then go on to be able to say that. Three and two make five, yeah. Or five is made up of three and two. Okay. Uh, so once uh, once they can progress to this concept, then it makes uh, things like uh, addition and subtraction uh, much easier, much more understandable. Um, in fact, uh, more into the relational understanding level of uh, of addition and subtraction. Okay. So uh, this is the, the CPA, the concrete, pictorial, and abstract approach. This is just one example. Yeah? Um, okay, another, um, is, is this also related to the CPA, but uh, we, we, it's moving to the visualization. Yeah? Visualization. Uh, so one, one feature is also a visual way of uh, solving problems. So, for example, we say we want to cut three quarters of a cake into four equal pieces. Yeah? So, uh, how do we do that? And, you know, at the end, what, what fraction is each of these uh, four pieces of the original cake? Okay. So, uh, of course, uh, for a child who has learned fractions, yeah, they know what to do. Yeah, they know they take three, three over four or three quarters. Uh, divide by four and then you know they, they go through the steps but uh, at first uh, when when they are trying to teach uh, this division of fractions uh, we can approach it visually okay? so we start with a cake yeah? uh, now the, of course the cake is uh, in, in just a pictorial form okay <clears throat> and uh, we don't have the whole cake yeah we have only three quarters of a cake yeah, so then we can we can represent three quarters of a cake. Okay? So how do we divide these three quarters of a cake into four pieces equal? Yeah, four equal pieces. Okay? So we take the three quarter cake, take the three quarter cake, and each part 
uh, we divide into four. Yeah. So we see you can divide divide uh, each each quarter into four. Okay. Why four? Because we want to divide into four. Okay. <clears throat> so then uh, we can see that if we if we can uh, uh, group this into four equal or four identical uh, parts. Yeah, where each one has uh, three of these of, of these small pieces. Okay. So each one has three of these small pieces. So we got here one, yeah, two, three, four. Yeah. So that that is uh that means uh we have already divided the three quarter cake into four equal pieces or four equal parts. Okay. Now if we if we want to go further and ask um so in these final four pieces, yeah. What is the fraction of the original cake? Each piece, each of these four pieces, what is the fraction of the original cake? Uh, then uh, we can we can see uh, that the, the the quarter cake that wasn't there uh, could also have been divided into four parts. Uh, so then we can see that this is actually the whole cake, the original whole cake is divided into 16. Yeah, four, eight, uh, twelve, sixteen. Yeah, sixteen parts. That means, uh, the four equal cakes that we divide from the three quarter, yeah, would then be three out of sixteen or three over sixteen. Yeah? so the child can see and learn very easily, uh, how they go about that. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, we we don't continue doing that. We only do until the child understands the process and then uh, uh, pro proceed to be able to do the division. Um, that's, of course, the abstract part. Yeah, If we say 3 over 4 divided by 4 and then how we work that, yeah, that is, uh, that, that is uh, uh, the process uh, in, in an abstract or using the symbols, yeah, using the numbers. Uh, but before that, uh, we we can visualize the problem, okay. <clears throat> um, so, uh, so another form of visualization, or more advanced form of visualization that is used a lot in the primary next is uh what we call bar models, uh, bar modeling. Okay, so uh, it is basically a pictorial representation of a word problem. Um, in some other curriculum, uh, there are there could be uh, different names that are used, yeah, such as bar diagram, block model, tape diagram. Uh, there may be slight differences in how how they do it, but it's the same basic idea that using a block or a bar, uh, to to represent uh, a word problem, yeah, which I'll be working on on uh, some examples yeah, as, as we progress. So in Singapore textbooks, they just simply call it model or maths model. Yeah? Um, uh, sometimes bar model, yeah, but uh, some, uh, sometimes just model. Yeah? <coughs> so um, uh, that's what they, uh, that's how it's described in the textbook, just to be aware. And so basically, it uses a bar to represent a known or unknown quantity. Yeah? We shall see how to apply. <clears throat> okay. Uh, it has been successful to help students understand the relationships between the different data in a word problem. Okay. Uh, so before, before uh, students can learn, uh, can solve a problem, Plus, they need to understand the the word problem in the first place. Yeah? So, the bar model helps them to sort out the different numbers. <clears throat> uh, it helps them to to um relate yeah to relate it in a visual way. Yeah? Uh, here we say draw a diagram to represent the data. Uh, but the idea is to to represent it in a visual way. 
and then from there to find a way to solve the uh, the word problem. Okay. Uh, it applies to word problems involving numbers and especially useful with fractions, percentages, and ratios. Okay. Uh, it is not uh for everything. Yeah, it doesn't re uh replace algebra. Okay, for example, um, uh, and it's not actually not uh, really applicable to things like uh, geometry, okay? <clears throat> where you play with shapes and so on. Okay? But uh, once, once uh, students are confident with numbers, uh, then it helps them also in the other, other areas like algebra, geometry, and so on. Okay? Um, as, as, as we said earlier, it relates to the basic confidence and competency. Okay, so uh, although I, I say bar model is uh, doesn't replace algebra, but it helps uh, to lay a foundation. Yeah? So once they, they understand the, how to use bar models well, uh, it helps them to relate to using algebra later on. Okay, <clears throat> right. So examples of uh, word problems that can be solved using. Um, uh, bar models. Uh, I just I'm just throwing out the examples for now. Yeah, just to appreciate. Uh, okay, the first one. Uh, Mrs. Lin made pastries to sell in a charity sale. Three quarters of them were curry puffs, and the rest were apple tarts. Uh, okay, so we see an, a fraction that three quarters. Three quarters were curry puffs, and the rest were apple tarts. She managed to sell 80% of the curry puffs and 140 apple tarts, leaving 20% pastries unsold. How many pastries were sold? Okay. Now, of course, this is not at the uh, not a primary uh three of or uh, four uh, level, yeah. Uh you because you see fraction, you see numbers, you see percentage, uh, which is actually uh, not so easy for a child to to handle okay um uh, but my idea of uh, putting this this example yeah which is actually from from the singapore textbook <clears throat> is that to show you the variety of uh, problems that bar model is is actually uh, very suitable to to handle okay uh, so you won't find this sort of uh, problems in most other maths curriculum that are not using bar model because it's quite difficult for a primary grade child yeah, to to handle this because there's mixture of of fraction percentage and numbers yeah <clears throat> yeah the next one uh just numbers and percentage yeah but uh, uh also is a bit less challenging than than the first one. Okay. There were guppies and sword tears in a fish pond, yeah? two types of fish. <clears throat> then uh, 70 new guppies were added to the pond. Now the number of sword tears decreased from 40% to 30%. And then the question asks, how many sword tears were there in the pond? Okay. Uh, so if we, if we give this to a, to a med student, uh, they probably think, oh, I need to use algebra. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, again, bar model can handle this very well. Okay, um, Sam only had had only twenty cent and fifty cent coins. Yeah, but, uh, he has only two types of coins. Um, and he had ninety four coins and spent thirty nine of them. <clears throat> he spent two fifths of the twenty cent coin and three seventh of the fifty cent coins. What is the dollar value of the money he spent? Okay, <clears throat> so uh, again, this one quite challenging. Yeah? Although it's just fractions and numbers, but there's two types of coins, and um, uh, and then you have to convert them to dollar value. Yeah, not just the number of coins, but at the end you need to to uh work out the dollar value. Okay, uh, so again. This will be quite challenging, but uh, it doesn't require algebra. Yeah? Again, bar model can handle this. Yeah? 
Right. So, um, <clears throat> so how do we introduce uh, bar models? Yeah. So in the early grades, yeah, they actually would be dealing with concrete representations. Yeah? They may actually be handling uh, manipulatives like, like chips and uh, unifix cubes, or or even uh, in uh, some cases, uh, the actual objects. Yeah? <clears throat> and then uh, we will move on to, say, for example, a uh, word problem like this. Yeah? There are eight apples and uh, Joe ate three apples. How many apples are left? Yeah. <clears throat> so of course this one is very simple problem. Uh, so at first the child would learn it this way. Yeah, they will actually have uh, eight apples, and then uh three are taken away, and then uh sorry, then how many are left? Yeah, then he can count. Uh, that there are five left. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is uh, a concrete way of uh, learning. Now, uh, so to progress to a pictorial way, okay, so let's say we line up the eight apples, yeah, and again we take away three and then we count five, okay, but why do we line them up? So that uh, we can begin to transition to pictorial, uh, to a pictorial way, yeah. So uh, we see that the part that is taken away. Is, is a short shorter bar okay and um <clears throat> uh okay this is a different a different uh, word problem okay so peter has four marbles and mark has uh three marbles so how many do they have all together so in a concrete way we would then have uh, peter and four marbles and mark and three marbles uh uh actually draw the marbles yeah or actually have the marbles for them to count <clears throat> and then put them together and count how many okay but um yeah of course it's uh, just simple problem but um when we move to pictoria then uh, we don't have the the pictures of the we, we proceed to not having the pictures of the object of the marbles in this case, yeah. So it's just, just uh, boxes, each box representing one marble, okay. And uh, uh, at a later than that, uh, we don't even have the individual boxes. Uh, we just put a bar, uh, to represent four, and and uh, another bar to represent three, okay. Uh, so this is not meant to be a scale diagram, yeah. Uh, that means we don't measure the, the bar for four and make it, uh, let's say four cm and the bar for three and make it three cm. We don't need to do it that way. As long as the bigger number, uh, the bar is longer. The smaller number, the bar is shorter. Okay. And then, uh, we put it together. Uh, so this is a basic bar model. Yeah. So, so this is four, this is three, and we want to know how many in total, how many all together. So we put together and then uh, the child can learn from the from this model that he or she is supposed to add so that he or she can find the total. Yeah? So so then they will do four plus three is seven. Okay. And answer that all together they have seven marbles. <clears throat> so that's how we progress yeah, from concrete to pictorial. Uh, uh, to a model, okay? okay. So the model is is a visual form. It is still a bit abstract, yeah, but it helps them to to um uh visualize the problem. Um. So earlier I say uh it helps them to break down the the word problem into the different parts. So so they see two numbers. They see two numbers. Uh, so they're able to represent the two numbers and they see that they need to find how many they have together. So they put the two together, yeah, instead of separately like this. Uh, they put it together and then they know they need to add it up. Yeah. So that's, that's how it helps them. <clears throat> okay. So, um, instead of having to draw, you know, four for, 
four for Peter and three for Mark the first, uh, then they can begin to uh, uh, put it together even faster yeah, by, by drawing it together. Yeah? So this is another way to represent the bar model. <coughs> the same problem. Yeah? So as I mentioned, it is not meant to be to scale. Okay? Just that the larger value should be longer than the smaller value. Okay. Okay, so uh, that's the basic introduction to bar modeling. Uh, so now we look at different types of bar models. Okay, there's the basic one is known as part whole model. Yeah, and then another one is comparison model and the change model. These are the common ones that we we use in the primary level. Okay. The part whole model looks at the relationship between parts. Yeah. So, uh, for example, uh, again the same problem. Yeah. Peter has four marbles. Mark has three marbles. How many do they have all together? So Peter has four. Mark has three. Um. Uh. So that means <coughs> Peter has one part. Peter has one part, which is four. Mark has another part which is three. And then we want to know the whole thing all together. Yeah? So we want to know the whole. So that's why this, this problem can be represented using a part whole model yeah? where Peter is one part, Mark is another part. And so uh, when we put them together to make the whole, um, what is the result? Okay? Uh, so from, from there, we see that to get the answer, we need to add the two parts. Okay, so four plus three, uh, the two parts added together, we will have the whole, the total. Okay. Okay, another example. Twelve apples are placed into two boxes A and B. Uh, so if there are five apples in A, how many boxes are there in box B? Okay, so again, this is example of a part and whole. Okay, so we know that the whole is uh, is twelve. Uh, so we we start out by drawing the bar, the long the long whole bar to represent twelve, and then part of it is in A and part of it is in B, two parts. Yeah. Uh, so A has five. Okay, and then we want to know how many in B. Okay. Uh, so again from the bar model, <coughs> the child can see that oh, he or she needs to subtract 5 from the 12 to find that there should be 7 in box B. Okay. <coughs> comparison. The comparison is uh, useful when we have two or more quantities to compare. Okay. Uh, so there are two types. One is known as additive comparison and multiplicative comparison. Yeah. So additive comparison, <clears throat> example, there are two numbers. The larger number is 23 more than the smaller number. Okay. Uh, the smaller number is 62. What is the larger number? Okay. So um, <clears throat> we, we don't know how much is the larger number? Yeah, so we just draw a bar, a long bar. Okay, then the smaller number. Um, uh, again, we can't draw to scale because we are we, we don't know what the larger number is, but we know it's smaller. Yeah, so we draw a smaller bar. Okay, and the the question tells us that the smaller number is uh thirty uh, 23, 23 smaller or 23 less than the larger number yeah so that gap there between the larger and the smaller is 23 <clears throat> and also the smaller number itself is 62 okay uh, so now we want to find what the larger number is yeah so um uh, of course uh, this this uh, bar model helps a child to to see that he or she needs to add the 62 and the 23 to find the larger number. Yeah. 
So that's how they will proceed to do the addition and get the larger number. <coughs> okay, multiplicative. Uh, this one uh, involves uh, uh, multiplication. Okay, so example, Danny has four times as much money as Edwin. Together, they have hundred and sixty-five dollars. Uh, um, how much money does Daniel have more than Edwin? Okay, <clears throat> so, uh, so if Edwin has uh, this amount of money, which we don't know yet how much, okay, uh, Daniel has four times, so we have uh four boxes equal to that, yeah, four boxes equal to that. So Daniel has four times as much. Now, um, so so you see that the child, uh, is able to break down the, the word problem, even though we do not know how much Daniel has, how much Edwin has. Yeah, we only know Daniel has four times as much. Yeah? so that that represents uh that part of the word problem that Daniel has four times as much money as Edwin. Okay, <clears throat> then how about the hundred and sixty five? Okay. So all together, all together, they have 165. So that means all these uh, four parts from Daniel and one part from Edwin is uh, total 165. Okay? So how do we know how much, uh, how much more Danny has? Yeah? Which we can see from this diagram is that it's these three parts that is more than Edwin, right? Because this part is equal, okay? This part is equal, and then there's three parts that's more than Edwin, okay? So how do you find that? So, <clears throat> so looking at the uh, bar model, the child can then figure out, okay, there are five equal boxes or five equal units uh, that would make up the 165, yeah? That means one unit will be 165 divided by five. So each of these units is 33. And then it has three units, uh, three boxes more than Edwin. So the amount that he has more would be three times the 33. Yeah? So then then he has nine, uh, $99 more than Edwin. Okay. <clears throat> so even though the, the problem is a little bit harder, uh, uh, the child can go through the process of uh, Analyzing the numbers given and then figure out uh, what to do. Okay. Of course, uh, this is not necessarily the only way to do it, but uh, you can see that how the visual way, how the bar model can help the child to understand and uh, to find a solution. <clears throat> okay. Change model. Okay. Uh, change model deals with the concept of adding or subtracting. Uh, uh, what happens before and after kind of thing. Yeah? So a mini market had uh, 188 kilograms of salt uh, to sell, uh, obviously. Uh. So they sold 67 kilograms on Sunday and 54 kilograms on Monday. So how much of salt is left in the mini market after that? Okay. <clears throat> so uh, one way to draw the model is before, that means at the beginning, uh, the mini market had 188 kilogram of salt. Okay. Then, uh, Sunday, on Sunday, 67 kilogram was sold, yeah, removed, yeah, from the mini market. So what is left here is what is left after Sunday. Okay. But, uh, uh, then there's uh, Monday, some more was sold, yeah? another 54 kilogram was sold. So that's what is left after Monday, uh, at the end of Monday. So, <clears throat> uh, so now you can see that what we need to find out is this, this remainder. Yeah? Uh, so the child can see that, oh, we started with 188, then 67 was taken away. And then 54 was taken away. So what's left here? Okay. So they can 
then understand that oh I need to subtract 100 uh, take uh, 188 subtract 67 and then after that subtract another 54 yeah and so they find that okay 67 is left yeah <clears throat> so okay the same problem uh, but a different way of uh, modeling this is that uh, now instead of just having an empty space to represent what was uh, soaked or what was taken away, uh, now the what was soaked is uh, represented as a bar itself. Okay, so uh, Sunday sixty seven kilogram was soaked. Okay, and Monday another fifty four was soaked. Okay, so <clears throat> we want to find out how much is left. Uh, which is this part. Okay. So even though it's a different model, uh, I mean a different diagram, uh, but it's still representing the same word problem. Okay. So it can be done in different ways. <clears throat> and again, uh, it leads to the same uh, uh, calculation. Yeah? 188 minus 67, and then after that minus 54. Okay, so as you can see, um, two different models there already to deal with the same problem. Uh, here exactly the same problem. Now we yet another um, another uh, way to represent it using a part whole model instead of uh, the the change model. Okay, so the part whole model we have the whole being the amount at the beginning. And then uh, we got the Sunday part, we got the Monday part, and we got the leftover part. Okay, so Sunday soak sixty seven, Monday soak fifty four, and then there's the leftover part. Okay, again <clears throat> from the bar model, uh, the child can see that it should be one hundred eighty eight minus sixty seven minus fifty four, uh, giving sixty seven left. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so those are uh, some of the quick examples. And uh, uh, I just like to finish off with a couple of uh, observations because having seen the teachers uh, teach uh, bar models, sometimes, uh, uh, in fact, quite often, yeah, I notice uh, uh, certain points. So, uh, the point I like to emphasize is that this visualization and bar model are to help students in understanding, yeah, not to make them good in drawing. Okay. Uh, because this is one of the frustration that a young child has. They may not be very steady with their, you know, with their, uh, uh drawing or writing. And so, uh, uh, and then the teachers insist that oh they must draw straight lines they must draw nice boxes uh it's not it's not meant to be that yeah it's meant for them to visualize and understand the problem uh so um uh, I tell the teachers this is maths class not an art class okay <laughs> so um uh as long as they they can use the bar model. To, to achieve this is, is good. Yeah. Of course, uh, if they are, if they are good at it and then they want to make it nicer, yeah, go ahead. But that is not the point. Yeah. It's not the point to make them good at drawing. Okay. And also, it is a process. Okay. Another frustration that, uh, uh students face <clears throat> is that they don't know where to start drawing because they cannot have a mental picture of what the bar model will be like at the end. Yeah. Again, that's not the point. Um, we don't start out with, oh, I want the bar model to look like this, therefore I draw it like this. No. We look at the word problem. We see what we can learn from the word problem, uh, what we can make sense of the word problem, and then we start drawing, and then we improve on it. Yeah. Um, so it's a process. Uh, start drawing, improve on it. Uh, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to to erase and redraw. Okay. So what I mean is, uh, example like the the last uh, word problem, right? Uh, uh, 
the students would learn, wouldn't start with having having this bar model in mind when they read the word problem. Yeah? So this is one of the obstacle, one of the hurdle that stops them uh, from wanting to draw. Uh, in fact, they don't want to draw because they don't know where to start. Yeah? Uh, uh, so actually, if they drew something like this, do you think it's okay? What do you think? Okay, so yeah, uh, if the child is able to draw like that from that word problem, uh, that's that's all is required. Okay, of course, if they draw nice boxes, uh, fine. But if they draw it like this, it has shown that he or she has understood uh, the the important points of the word problem and uh, is able to apply it. Uh, in, in a bar model and then use it to um, <coughs> uh, to re derive the solution okay so um, as teachers we don't we uh, don't put uh, obstacles don't put hurdles to to make the student frustrated in learning huh? we work with what they are able to handle uh, first and uh, uh, get them to slowly improve. Okay, so this child who draw this yeah may not be very good with his um you know uh uh his his motor skill he can't draw straight line properly. Uh, so don't insist that they must use ruler, draw nice boxes and things like that. Yeah? That's not the point. Yeah? Later on, yes, uh, you can get them to improve, but but uh, when they are confident. With how to do the bar model, uh, then then it doesn't become an obstacle to them. That's fine. Yeah? But at first, don't insist on it. Yeah? So remember, it's a tool to help them understand. It's a tool to help them learn to, to solve the uh, word problem. Okay. So that's that's all I have uh, in terms of my slides. Um, any questions? I hope it's helpful. I will I will stop the share screen, right? So uh, uh we have uh Mr. So we have questions uh, uh on the chat box. Thank you. Uh chat box, sir. Let me yes. <coughs> Okay. If next topic is decimal numbers, the students answer it. Fraction version can that be considered correct? Okay. Now that that uh depends on the on the lesson objective, lah, Yeah. Uh. Uh. The because if the lesson is teaching them uh to express in decimal uh then you should to advise them to uh to express that in decimal uh, because you see in in later when they um uh, when they are taking the the exams like igcse and so on yeah um they need to follow the instruction of the question so uh if the Okay, in IGCC, if the question doesn't say that they should answer as a decimal or answer as a fraction, then both are acceptable. Okay, uh, so that is the, the standard. But if the question is clear that it should be in decimal, uh, then they need to follow. Uh, yeah? Or if the question say, or uh, sometimes you know you can get a question that gives the information in decimal, but they want the answer in a fraction. Yeah, because it is uh, one thing to test them whether they're able to convert the decimal to fraction. Yeah? So then, of course, they have to answer as a fraction. Yeah? That means if they left it as a decimal, they have not fully answered the question. Yeah? Doesn't mean that they get zero. Yeah? Because, uh, it's just the final part that they, they didn't do. Yeah? So maybe it's just you know, minus one because they didn't do the final part. Yeah? Not not totally zero for the whole 
whole question yeah? because they have, they have answered everything correctly except the last part they didn't do. Yeah, so if answer fractional, yeah, so I hope I answered. Yeah, it depends on the on the question. If the question asks where to be in a certain form, then they should give it in that form. Uh, so students should learn to, to understand the question and answer accordingly. Nah? Yeah? And if the question didn't say, then we cannot penalize the, the student also. Lah, yeah? As long as it's correct. Yeah, that means that means instead of 0 0.5, we put half, yeah, one over two. Uh, because that is exactly the same, yeah? except one is in fraction, one is in decimal. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Are students allowed to provide answers can we talk? Okay. Uh, it again, uh, let me let me answer it from the perspective of the exam. Okay. Generally, uh, the exam and wants the student to show the steps, to show the working. Okay. Of course, it's very straightforward numbers like you know, 102 plus 3, you know, they can, you know, 105. Yeah? Um, but uh, uh, I mean, most of the exam questions will be more, will be harder than that. Lah. Yeah, you, you, you get a few simple ones, straightforward ones. Uh, uh, how you can tell in the exam is that if it's just one mark, yeah, then generally uh, they don't expect to see the, the steps. Yeah? That means if you see the question like 102 plus uh, 13, for example, yeah, and then it's only given one mark. That means uh, it's okay. Generally, it means it's okay to just give the answer. Okay? But if you see two marks, three marks, four marks, yeah, it means they expect to see the steps, how you arrive at the answer. Okay. Uh, so so that's that's where um, uh, they shouldn't just answer give the, the number. Yeah. Um okay, how it relates to our adducees, again you look at you look at how uh, the marks are given. Yeah. So generally, if if it's, if it's just one mark, yeah, that means we only expect answer. But in general, in general, we want them to show their how they arrive. Yeah. So that's why usually, uh, you you don't often see a one mark uh, thing in the test. Okay. Because uh, we want them to see. Uh, in some cases, in the primary, we we want them to also show the bar model yeah because uh, that that shows their their the way that they handle the the word problem uh, yeah <clears throat> so i hope that answers your question any others Okay, maybe another point I like to add, yeah. Uh, if, although my session here is uh, on the primary maths, but uh, some of you may have heard uh, a bit of uh, update in terms of the Cambridge exam. Uh, that uh, from next year, from next year, uh, the there is one paper for for the maths exam, yeah, at IGCSE. There is one paper where there is no calculator allowed. Okay. Uh, uh, so some some teachers are, are a bit anxious about that, saying that you know they don't want to allow students to use calculator and so on. Yeah. Um again, uh, we don't need to go overboard, yeah, because <clears throat> the paper that has got no where the calculator is not allowed means that they they want to test uh, the students uh, in the in their basic uh, uh, skills uh, addition subtraction multiplication and so on okay and uh, it can be algebra yeah um 
<coughs> because in algebra, uh, uh, the calculator doesn't really help you yeah, when you have to work through the, the algebra steps. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, at the end, when you get the answer, you, you can use a calculator to help you to check whether you, you got it correctly. Yeah? But <coughs> in the case of the paper with no calculator, it means you, you cannot do that. Huh? Yeah? So uh, what, I, what I see is that, yes, of course, we should encourage the student to build the confidence and the competencies in, uh, in their arithmetic, their addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and so on. Um, uh, so the point is, of course, uh, not to just reach out for the calculator every time they see maths problem. Okay? Uh, uh, that they should try to see uh, if they can solve it first. Uh, of course, um, there are, are bigger numbers and more complex numbers where they would need a calculator. Then fine, yeah, you use a calculator. But uh, before that, they should um, uh, ask themselves whether they need calculator or not, yeah, uh, and not just automatically use a calculator. Okay. <clears throat> Um, okay, here, study uh, the word problem, harus menyita bau model untuk mendapati. Okay, this this is only uh, in the in the edusis uh, maths, yeah, because we are following the the Singapore maths. Yeah, again with the questions that ask for the bar model. Yeah, um, because we we okay again as I say yeah understand the objective the bar model is to help them uh, handle the word problem okay so later on especially once they, they've uh, learned how to handle the word problem you will find some students are able to handle the word problems very efficiently without drawing the bar model okay don't penalize them look at their solution whether it has shown understanding of the of the maths concept the maths problem uh, and whether they've done it correctly yeah? um, <clears throat> only only at the the initial parts when we are introducing the bar model we ask them to draw the bar model okay uh, so so that's why the the point that I made also not to make it an obstacle that means, uh, if they draw a diagram that is not so nice looking, don't penalize them yeah, as long as it's correct. Yeah? So they don't, they don't feel the frustration of having to draw because some children, they are just not good at drawing. Okay? So uh, uh, help them to, to uh, progress through that. Huh? <coughs> yeah. Any more questions? Okay, this one is just um, just introducing the bar model and the uh, the, the basic concepts of Singapore maths. Yeah? So uh, actually if uh, if uh, people are interested you know, to actually go deeper into the bar model, then uh, later on we can we can arrange uh, more in-depth training. Yeah? So then we would we will actually give you uh, those uh, uh, some of those questions that you saw, and uh, uh, let you work through yeah on the bar model, and and uh, learn to apply this bar model in in more complex uh, word problem. Okay, uh, so today is just the uh, introduction to the basics. Huh? Okay. <clears throat> So if there are no more questions, I can hand back to uh, Miss Jess. Okay, any questions? Samo, while we are having the, uh, Mr. Su here, actually very hard to get him. <laughs> uh, Mr. Su is uh, exam officer as well 
for our Oakbridge school here. So anything related with the exam, Cambridge, Cambridge. So he's the one who um liars. Yeah. So he's experienced more to uh, maths uh, and also physics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So any question other than primary maths you want to ask, you can ask uh, him directly. So even though this topic is mathematics, we can ask uh, physics now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's the one who managed the physics as well. Since, uh, so how about the mathematics for advance? Uh, because yes. the topic is uh, just for right? Can you can ask him? Yeah. 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 Silakan Pak. Yeah. Maybe not for me, but for our staff, who um, want to ask uh, the advance. <laughs> uh, sometimes I I get um I get questions from oh, teachers okay. and centers yeah, through WhatsApp or email. Um so yeah you, you can you can send in your questions that way. Uh of course um sometimes I may not be free to answer you straight away, lah, yeah, but uh we we'll try we we'll try to help. Okay, our session should finish 3.30. Um, if you still have question, I will still give you time to ask. Hey, sorry, 2.30. <laughs> Karena di Malaysia beda. Malaysia uh, 3.30, tia setengah empat. <laughs> Confusing. Teacher Su, uh, maybe you can update in terms of the version of the maths. Uh, okay. But uh, for Indonesia, you, you have put in different version. Yeah? yeah, but some of the centers still uh, taking the international syllabus, international version. <clears throat> okay. Um. Okay, the our maths version in the EduSeeds because we were making some changes, uh, due to the Cambridge uh, syllabus update. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, one one area that the teachers ask about is the non-calculated paper. Yeah, but actually that's not a big part. Yeah, uh, there are some other changes where certain topics are. Uh, remove and certain topics are introduced. Yeah, so that's why we have to actually change some content. Yeah, <clears throat> so um, in the for the the modules that are affected by the change, uh, we updated according to the twenty twenty four uh version. Yeah, so you see certain modules, uh, where there's content for twenty twenty four. Okay, because why 2024 is because uh, especially those students in grade in our grade 9 uh, they, they start the grade 9 to prepare uh, because the IGCSE preparation is uh, actually over two years yeah so in grade 9 that means this year they already start preparing to take the exam next year yeah uh, when they are in grade 10 
So you see in uh, for some modules in grade nine, there's separate content for 2024 and 2023. Okay, so 2023 is actually for those who, who are finishing off and taking the exam this year. Okay, so uh, 2024 is for those taking next year or later. Okay, um, so certain, a few modules in grade eight also has that because uh, uh, the change to the IGCSE syllabus uh, uh, affect the topic in grade eight as well. So, so we have to update the content. Yeah? So the, the basic point is that for students who are taking exam next year or later, uh, make sure you are following the 2024 content. Okay. Okay, thank you, Teacher Sue, for your well you. explanation. <laughs> okay, welcome. Apakah ada soalan lagi pertanyaan daripada sekolah-sekolah uh, or centers? Kalau sudah tidak ada, mungkin bisa berikan thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Russo, for the session. You. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, again, uh, once again, uh, thank you so much, this teacher Sue or Mr. Sue. I call uh, Mr. Sue actually teacher Sue because uh, we use <laughs> before this is a teacher as well. Yeah, I used to call him. He's my Sifu. <laughs> He's my Sifu. <laughs> okay, thank you for your time, teacher Sue. Okay, uh, thank you. Explain. Yeah. Um, Hope it's so, helpful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, terima kasih juga ke, uh, kepada semua yang telah pun bergabung dengan kami lewat daripada mungkin daripada awal hari pertama, hari kedua uh, sehinggalah hari ini. Uh, dan jangan lupa besok untuk sesi terakhir kita ada lagi which is AI in education. Uh, I believe um, with this era AI ya, uh, we want to know what is the potential, what is the challenges as a educators, what we need to have and what we need to know. So tomorrow, sesi itu uh, kita akan bincangkan. We will learn together. Okay?